Statistics and Excel. Chuck luck example problem part number one. Get ready and some coffee because we don't accept ugly arguments dressed up with lipstick. Instead, we demand statistics because beautiful data doesn't even need makeup to radiate. We just need the proper, you know, appreciation for data, which is what we develop here because data is what we do. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because... Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Well, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab the one that we will be working on as you can see blank will construct the entire problem here practicing our excel tools as we do so let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going what we will be doing looking at the game of chuckaluck sometimes called sick bow this is a game often found in casinos or carnivals but our focus is, is on the probability so whether you want to learn Chuck Luck or Sick Bow for the game itself or whether you're here for just the probability concepts, then uh, stick with us because remember that these games of chance are built directly on top of the idea of probability and therefore are very good tools to learn those concepts. Once we have those concepts, we can apply them more broadly to statistics in general and many different types of applications. All right, so how does the chuck luck game work here? So we typically will have the uh, three dice. They might be different colored dice. And so we usually have, we're going to say red, orange, and blue for our particular example here because those colors work well for us uh, in Excel. And so you roll the dice and you pick a number. We know that each die has one out of six numbers on it. So if you roll any individual die, and were to pick a number, you would have a chance of winning one out of six times, you would think, if it was a fair uh, dice. That's going to be the... And so then we can think about from a one out of six probability, what would be the expected value, remembering that expected value, as we've seen in our prior game examples, has two things that are basically going to be involved. One is the probability of the outcome, but the second is going to be the payout. So is it a one for one payout or a more than one dollar for one for one payout, right? And those two things are involved to help us to calculate the average return, whether or not the game be favorable, unfavorable, or even every time we have a game that's betting against the house in a casino, we expect the game to be unfavorable. But we can apply those same concepts to investing situations where hopefully in the long term we have a favorable situation or two games that we might construct just to play for fun with somebody else, in which case our goal would probably to be constructing an even game so that we're just having fun with an even game, right? So those are the, where you would expect the, the three areas. Now, remember, if you're in a casino, then of course... There are two broad kinds of games that you would expect. One is where you're betting against other people, like if you're playing poker or horse racing or something like that. And then the casino is going to, for their service of providing the game, is going to be taking a piece of the pot that's going to go to the winner. So someone wins the horse race. The money is going to go to the winner, but the casino is going to take a piece out of it. That's how they get paid. They're just basically being paid a salary to provide the service of the horse race or whatever if if you're talking about a game where you're playing against the casino like we are here with chuckaluck 
or blackjack or craps or roulette, then, of course, the, the, you're playing against them. So the odds are going to be against you in the long term. Because, again, that's how the casino, of course, gets paid for the service of providing the game, if you want to think about it uh, basically that way. So that's the general idea. Now, it gets a little more complex where you have different outcomes that can happen in the game and different payouts. So in, in this case, we can say, OK, well, that's great. But now we have three dice. So it's not one out of six that we're talking about. Uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can pick a number. And if one of the three dice gets that number we're going to get we're going to get paid out uh for that and then we get a better payout if two of our numbers uh we get a one for one payout if one number matches if two of our numbers match then we're going to get a payout of two for one and if all three numbers match what we rolled then we're going to get a three for one now this is going to complicate our analysis because now we have these three different payouts that could take place on the you know the one scenario of rolling the dice that are kind of connected to each other which is different than what we saw on say the roulette wheel where you can bet on a bunch of different things but they're not really like connected right so we can analyze each of them more independently okay so that's going to be the general idea so we're going to think about uh, the odds calculation and then we'll have to think about okay what are your odds that you get zero numbers uh, that you picked out of the three dice. What are the odds that one number comes up out of the three die? What are the odds that two of your numbers come up and so on? And then we'll try to, once we get the probabilities and get our expected value, then we'll practice some of our empirical testing using Excel to, to simulate the rolling of the dice and see how we can use that to kind of test what we think is happening from a theoretical standpoint. All right, let's go to the practice tab. Remembering that we have pre-formatted cells in here. So if you wanna just plug in the numbers and follow along this way with less Excel formatting, you could do so, but we're gonna reconstruct everything in a blank tab. So you can follow along with that with your own blank tab if you so choose. All right, so first I'm gonna hold control, scroll in where I'm currently at uh, 295 on the zoom in. That's what I typically start doing. I'm gonna select the entire worksheet with the triangle as we do every time. Right click on the selected area, format the cells. I like to see it as currency, negative numbers bracketed. We're gonna say no dollar sign and no decimals to start out. We will add the decimal as needed as we go. Uh, so then we're going to say, OK, and let's make this bold home tab font group. It's going to be bold. You don't want to be too bold in the casino because then you might be kind of stupid. They take advantage of super boldness. But uh, but we still want it bold here, somewhat bold, bold like James Bond in there. He's all, he always wins and then he looks cool doing it somehow. I don't know how he does it. How does he do that, man? All right, so this is going to be chuck -a luck or sick bow. And let's make this black and white. We're going to go home top <clears throat> font group, make this uh, black and white. And then we're going to have our payout. So what's the payout structure that we have here? Let's make this black and white as well. Black and white. All right, so we have our three, we have our three dice and they, they all have six sides on it. So if we were to say, all right, then if I pick one number like a four, then what are the what could happen with those three dice? Well, we could have uh, one of your number of your number comes up, right? So one four comes up. Let's put this up here. A one four comes up, and so so you can have. And then if if one came came up, what would be the payout? If you win, this is going to be the win uh, lose scenario you win one and you lose one so it's a it's going to be a one for one payout if one number comes up so one four in our case so if two of your number comes up so we get two fours then they're going to pay us two for one so we imagine we're putting one dollar on the board and our, our number four comes up twice. Well, then they put they put $2 on top of the original dollar that we had. 
uh, and we take the three dollars off one that we put down, and then we get the two extra dollars. Obviously, you can you can multiply this out if you put you know ten dollars down, then a one for one. If you win, they're gonna put ten dollars on top. If it was two numbers, then they're gonna put the twenty dollars or chips whatever on top. And then if you lose, you're only gonna lose one. So this is gonna be two. I'm sorry, two for one. And then the other thing that could happen is three of your numbers could come up. Three of your number, three of fours could come up in our case. So we're, what would happen then? They, then they pay us three to one. So, so now you could say, all right, this gets a little bit more complicated because it's not like you're rolling one dice, one out of six because three different things could happen to win. I could win either if one of the dice has, has, a, has my number, which I picked a four, or two fours could come up and I win more or three fours could come up and I win uh, even more. So how can we kind of analyze that in terms of what are the odds and what's going to be our expected value for this game when these two things, when these things are kind of like more linked together and a little bit more complex than we saw analyzing each individual thing happening in say a roulette wheel, for example. So let's make let's center this. I'm going to go to the home tab uh, alignment and center this. Let's make let's put some brackets around here. Home tab font group. Put some brackets around this thing and make it blue. So I'm going to go to the more colors. Do the Excel is fun guy blue standard. This is what he used to use. Excel is fun guy blue. All right, I'm going to select these two and make them a little bit skinnier. All right. So let's let's break out. A little skinnier. Okay, so and then I'll make a skinny D. Let's make a skinny D here. So let's think about the odds of each of these things that could happen, right? So what? So let's think about the best one first because it's quite unlikely that we would think that all three dice are going to come up with the number that we picked in our case of four. So what are the odds of three of your number coming up? Three of your number number coming up so let's go we can think about that home tab font group and we'll make this black and white and notice our strategy here is is clearly usually going to be okay there's a lot of, there's a lot going on in any particular game can we deconstruct it down to fundamental parts that we can then think about individually making the problem more simplified and easy remember you can't do this all the time because we know that sometimes in certain system scenarios, the whole is greater than the parts and you have pro probability kind of situations that come into play. But with many things, that's a great way to do it. Like, especially kind of like engineering things or something where we can basically break the whole complex thing, which is just a, a jumble of different smaller things down to its component parts and then put it back together so we can kind of think of things one at a time make the problem easier this is a common tactic in any kind of math or science or anything like that so that's what we'll try to do here say okay let's look at this one at a time we're going to say that let's say the chances for for red i'm going to say orange these are the dice colors blue so we have a red orange and blue dice and then i'll say the product these are going to be our headers Let's go ahead and make that black and white. So we're gonna say home tab, font group, black, white. Let's center it. So your number, to get your number, uh, what is it, your number, which let's just imagine it's a four again. We have a one out of, for the red dice, the total numbers on the dice, six, right? And then for the orange dice, we also have a one out of six chance and they are independent from each other because the red dice does not in any way affect the outcome of the orange dice is the idea. And then the blue dice, you also have a one out of six chance. So you have three dice, each having a one out of six chance to hit that four. And we want to look at the odds of all three of them hitting that four. So they're all independent so I can then multiply these out, which is taking the product. So equals the product, which is just multiplying 
That's the formula for multiplying one times one times one, which is of course one. I can take the product of the denominators, do -do, which comes out to uh, 216. And then we can make this into a decimal format on um, percent format, let's say, equals one out of six, one divided by six. Let's go ahead and percentify that in the number group and add some decimals. I can copy that across. That gives me one out of six, so 16.67 about, or 6667, or on forever. And then I can go to the next one, and we got one out of uh, 216.46, or I can take the product of these three numbers equals the product in percentage format of these three. That's gonna give us, if we percentify, add some decimals, we've got the 0.46%. Let's take that and say, okay, home tab, font group, and go uh, blue and bordered. And let's make these a little bit thinner so we can save some space. We like to save space, be nice and tight. Okay, so that's pretty low probability that you're gonna get all three of them as the number that you picked, 0.46% uh, on the odds. Now the flip side of that, what, what are the chances that you get none of your numbers? So you pick a four and none of them end up being a four, which means you lose, right? What are my odds of losing in essence? Let's go, let's go to the skinny. I'm gonna go to the home tab uh, and, and format paint so I get a skinny J. I knew a skinny J once, he got, he got bigger as he got older, but it used to be really skinny. Skinny J was an apt name. Odds of zero of your number is what we're doing this time. So let's make this home tab font group. We're gonna go black and white, and then let's put the same headers in here and say, all right, what are the, what's the likelihood that we just lose? We just, we're just losers. What's the likelihood of that? It's pretty high for you. Okay, whatever. That wasn't nice. I'm not a loser. Home tab font group will make this black, white, and center. And then let's say this is going to be your, uh, your, not your number. We're going to say not your number. So what are the odds that it's not your number, which we'll imagine is a four? Well, it's going to be equal to six minus one. You have five chances out of the total on the dice, which is six. So five, six for the red dice, five, six for the orange dice, and five, six for the blue dice, not to come up with a four. Let's sum it up, or product. We take the product, multiplying it out five times five times five. Product, product of those three, we get to one, uh, 125, and then the product, I hit the caps lock, Oh no, K Paso, what happened? So equals the product of these three and over 216. Let's do let's look at it from a percentage basis equals five sixths. Percentify to recognize, and then we'll add some decimals. And then let's grab that fill handle and drag it across. So you have five six times five six times five six is fifty-seven, or this is the pr this divided by this, we can also do it this way, the product of the percentage format and percentify to recognize. And then, so now, so now we have a 57, so you have a pretty high chance of losing, right? So to have them, neither, none of them come out to be a winning number is 57.87%. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an unfavorable game yet, because we also have to consider the payouts. It's like, well, yeah, you, you're likely not to get the number, but if you get three numbers, then you get $3 compared to one. You get a three to one payout, and if you get two, you get a two for one payout. So if it was all one for one, then you would expect the fact that you're gonna lose 57% of the time is certainly unfavorable, but it's like, well, yeah, but you can't really tell because the payout over here is higher than a one for one, does that compensate? Of course, it's not gonna because it's a casino game, but 
we we can we can we can say okay we're not done yet that's the thing so let's go to the home tab font group put some brackets around that we'll put some borders here all right let's do some of the more complex ones now let's make this blue excel is fun blue excel is fun blue all right let's go back on over here and then we're going to go to the j make that skinny we're going to home pet home format paint make a skinny p all right so what are the odds of one of your number coming up like one four in our example one four comes up so let's make that black and white for the header uh i didn't do the black part black and white so then so now we're going to say for the for the for the uh we're going to say the red die comes up so the odds for the red die and we're going to say this is going to be red and blue and product again and then i'll make this red because we're going to say the red die is the winner this time let's make that red just for the fun of it and i'll make it white so i can see it better and i'll make these just the normal headers black white center let's center this and then so your number your number the red one comes up maybe i should make this one red red is a winner let's make this one black red is a winner how, how what's the likelihood of one one that happening for one it's going to be equal to uh equal to one out of six not equal to let's just say one out of six for the red die and then this is the total and then the other two die we're going to say our losers which is going to be equal to six minus one meaning you have the five six chance for it being not a four over six and this will be also five six chance over six so we have one a possibility of the red is a winner right and so we're going to say all right well in that case then let's uh sum this up well not the sum the product equals the product of these so we multiply those out one times five times five equals the product of these six times six times six and then we'll take a look at it from a percentage standpoint which is going to be one over six let's percentify to recognize and add some decimals drag it across there we have it double checking down here equals the product of these this times this times this percentify to recognize and there we have it so 11.57 uh, for that outcome and then of course we could say well we could also have the orange right <laughs> it comes out the winner the four and the other two not right so i'm going to go let's make this border and blue and then i'll just copy this whole thing down i'm going to copy this thing down and say copy and paste and then let's say this is going to be equal to the one above it equal to the one above it and we'll copy that across Let's make this a little smaller so I can see everything at the same time. I'm going to format paint this one over. Oh, K Pa So. Oh, no, K Pa So. All right, let's format paint. I had to restart it, by the way, because it was doing funny stuff. So I'm going to make this black. And then this time we're saying the blue one is the winner. Blue, blue is the winner. Blue is the winner. So now we could just say, okay then then we're going to say this comes out to five six because it was a loser five six is a loser and the blue one was a winner at one six which have comes of course comes out to the same numbers down below it's just that the blue one was the winner this time and then of course the last way that we can come out with one out of the six would be that these are going to be the same is that the blue one let's format paint this one the orange one is the winner orange is the winner let's use this orange right here so in that case it would be loser winner loser oh wait this would be a five for the loser 
And so there, so we have these three different outcomes for the three different dice, uh, which come out, each of those coming out to the probability of 11.57 likelihood. So we can then say the total odds, odds, we're gonna, we're gonna then say that we can, uh, do, 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 let's say we add these together. So we're gonna say this is this plus this plus this. And let's percentify that, percentify, add some decimals. So for one out of, for one out of the three dice to hit your number, like a four, we can have the red hit the four and the rest not, the blue hit the four and the, the other two not, the orange hit the four, the other two not, each of them having an 11.57% chance, which is a 34.72 chance uh, that we win that way, winning the dollar. But you can't just say that's it, of course, because it's not like it's a 34 chance versus a 57 chance of winning nothing. Uh, because and and we also have this chance that we calculated of winning because we all of those three numbers have to add they have to add up to 100 percent, right? So we haven't calculated out then the next way that we could win, which is going to be the odds of of two numbers coming up. So how could that happen? Let's make a skinny over here. We'll make a skinny. I'll show you how it happens. I'll show you how you can that can happen. So this is going to be odds of two of your number coming up. Let's go ahead and make that black and white home tab font group black and white. So we can basically copy this whole thing again. Let's go ahead and copy this and say, okay, two of the numbers coming up. So we could have like, let's say the red and the orange uh, happen to be your number. And so that means what's the likelihood of that happening? They both come up to be a four, one out of six, and then also another one out of six, and then the blue tab doesn't come out, which is a likelihood of five out of six. So now if I take the products, here's the product, multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. So we have a 2.31% uh, chance of that happening. Let's look at another combination of that possibility happening. Copy that, Roger out, paste it down, 10-4, 10-4. Sorry, I got, I thought I was Top Gun for a second. I had, I got, here, let's, this is the product. I need to put the product over here. I'm getting distracted. I'm imagining that I'm flying in a jet plane now, and that's distracting me. Home tap, let's go put this here. Let's sit, so we could have the red and then the blue the red and then the blue. And so that would mean that this would be one out of six, but the orange would be five out of six. And then the blue would be one out of six, right? Because this one comes out, what's the odds it comes out to a four? This one doesn't come out to a four, five, six. This one does come out to a four, which is one, six. And if we multiply that out, once again, of course, we come out to a symmetrical total here. We have a, a chance of 2.31. Let's do it one more time. Uno vase moss because we got one more combo that could happen. Let's say we don't get the red one. Red one doesn't happen. Format paint, make it black. The orange and the blue are the winners for you. We're going to say that's going to be the orange. So now that can happen five out of six for the loser, one out of six for the winner, one out of six for the winner. Once again, we get that combo of two, three, two point three one. So that's the combos that you can get two out, right? The red and the orange was a winner. If you get two out of the three, the, or it could be the red and the blue, or it could be the orange and the blue. And we already did the blue and the red. So those are the three combos. So let's take a look at our total odds then. Total odds for that one are gonna be equal to this plus this plus this. Okay, so that if I go to the uh, percentify to recognize adding some decimals. So that's about 6 point, uh, 6 6.94. All right, so now we can look at these and say, okay, if I add these together, all my different combinations of odds and chances uh, should come out to be to be a uh, hundred percent. So we can kind of double check that and say, all right, 
Let's bring this over here. I think I have all the pieces put. Let's put the engine back together now. See if we could take all of our pieces and put them into the to a table. Let's let's uh, make a skinny column to do that. We'll take this skinny column and make a skinny A B. So now we're gonna say number number. This is the the number of your numbers. <laughs> Right, the number of outcomes that come out to be a four could either be you roll three dice, you get zero fours if we picked a four. You could get one four, you could get two fours, you could get three fours. Those are the possible outcomes that we could that we could get. What are the payouts? Payouts. So the payout, if you if you uh, get zero, if you get zero uh, uh, fours or your number, you're going to lose a dollar. Uh, if you get one four, what's the payout? It's going to be one dollar. You get a one for one payout. Let's say you put the dollar down. If you get zero fours, they take your dollar. If you get one four, then they're going to put a dollar on top of your dollar. One for one payout. You take the two dollars. One is profit. The other one's the one you put down. If you get two uh, fours, uh, of your number, then they give you two dollars. You put your dollar down, two fours come up, therefore they put two dollars on top. You take the three dollars back, two of the winnings, one your initial bet. And if all three of them come out to be your number and you put one dollar down, they put three numbers on three dollars on top of it. And of course, you can multiply this out if you put ten dollars down, then you lose the ten dollars. If you put ten dollars down, and they get one of the fours come up, then they put $10 on top. If two fours come up, they put the $20 on top. If three of them come up, $30 and so on. So what are the what are the odds then? So here's what we just calculated. What are the odds that zero of them come up? Well, if zero come up, we said that the odds are 57.87%. So we're, that's if we lose, we completely lose if that happens. Right, so there's our lose, and it's over 50%. So you're saying, hey, this is that doesn't look good, but uh, we get these different payouts. So we're not the story's not over for the expected value. So what about if we get one? What are the odds that we get at least one number? That's got not to be too far off that that happens, is it? Because I mean, well, to get one number, we calculated that over here. One of the three dice has to hit our number. They each have an 11.57% chance that if we add those together, we got a 34 point, uh, a 34 point something chance, 34.72. What about two numbers? Because that could happen. That ha I've seen that happen a bunch of times when I roll dice. So let's say two numbers. For two of the numbers to come up, then we have these combos, three combos. We came out to 6.9 four the two numbers can come up so okay let's percentify that and duh, duh, and then three numbers is highly unlikely but i see it happen like all the time i feel like the odds are a little low here but again it's probably my intuition is not quite right really it's only 0.46 percent of the of the time really but yeah because you have to actually pick that number it's not like just three numbers come up it's the three numbers that you actually picked you know, and so that's like three numbers come up more often, but the what you have to actually pick it beforehand. I think that's why I'm, my my mind is off on that. But if I if I total those up, then the total of these numbers it should add up to 100. Because we put all the possibilities in place. If that doesn't add up to 100, then something is wrong, and we haven't fully analyzed this. We've we're missing something. So that's our double check from an accounting standpoint. We're like, that's like our double entry accounting system. We're like, okay, I feel like I'm fairly confident that we have calculated this out because that adds up to 100. So now I can calculate my expected profit, expected value, expected value or profit, however you want to call it. If you think about this as an investment, this is kind of your expected profit, right? So let's go to say home tab, font group. Let's make this uh, black and white. So if we played this game over and over again, we would expect then we're going to say if I lose, I lose a dollar. And that happens 57.587% of the time, adding some decimals. But if I if I get one number, then I get a dollar. And that happens 34% of the time. 
And if I get two numbers, then I get $2 for my $1, two for one, and that happens 6.94% of the time. And then if I get three numbers, I get three for one payout, but that only happens 0.46% of the time. And so if I add up all those expected values equals the sum, we have a return, a total expected value, if we played this over and over, of 0 0.075, uh, 0.0787. So we expect to lose about 0 0.0787 on average of a dollar, meaning 7.87 cents per roll. Now again, that's counterintuitive when you look at the short run because you can't lose less than a dollar. You probably can't even bet a dollar. They're gonna make you bet like $5 or $10 minimum or something like that. $2 at least, right? So, so you're gonna lose at least $2 or win $2 or $10 or $5 uh, when you bet. But if you bet over and over for the long term, you we're expecting the expected value to play out to around losing on average 7.87 cents per, uh, per roll. So next we'll basically play this out and say, well, let's, let's map that out and uh, play the game and uh, check out some of these odds and see, see how they come out by using Excel's random number generation to uh, test it in somewhat of an empirical fashion, which you could possibly also use to run games, you know, if you wanted to kind of set up your own system like that. So let's go and make this, let's clean this up, home tab, bordered, Let's make it blue. Let's make uh, let's make these centered, centered. Let's do some uh, let's do some review for the spelling. Spelling's okay, doke. All right, that looks good.